you are still in this situation where you're, you're not even completely out of it and I'm getting in it and that's not fair for them. And that was kind of the policy that I had with him. Uh, Nick, you even asked me, like, are you, have you done this before? Have you go straight away? I'm like, I've never even thought about it. It's like, what's, what's different? It's like, I guess it's just you that's different because I just never actually, like, like, I've seen girls smile at me before, I've never done anything about it with her. It was just like, it's like she had a leash on me and she tugged me away. <laughs> And you said earlier you did not know she was pregnant until reading the newspaper. Yep. So um, that never came up in any conversation. Yeah. Um, there was no no indications that that was going on. Not. Um, he never hinted to anything like Nothing. that. As far as you knew, um, he was just leaving her. He had two children, and um, that was the final take on that. Yes, I think... I know why he lied to me. He lied to me because if I'd have known that he had a child on the way, I'd have never wasted my time with him in the first place. Like, none of this would ever even occur if he would have just told me the truth. It's like, you know, everything that happened that morning, I just don't, I don't know, like, I, I try to go back in my head, and I'm just like, I didn't want to do this, but I did it. And everything just kind of like... Felt like you had to? It just felt like it was... I don't even want to say it, I felt like I had to. It just felt like there was already something in my mind that I was planning that I was going to do it. And I woke up that morning, it was going to happen, and I had no control of it. And if I walk into a situation where I'm like, hey, I have good credit, and I have all of these things that I've been building, and you don't have your stuff together, like, what are we going to do with this? And it's important for your, your long-term smart. Thing. So I'm preparing. And so I just asked him, I was like, well, do you have 401k? And he was like, he's like, yeah, I do have that. And then I asked him, I was like, um, I, I didn't ask him, like, how much debt they had or anything, but I just said, is your lifestyle sustainable? And he was like, no. And I was like, how long do you think that's going to take? He's like, I don't know, but it's not sustainable. Honestly, I never even thought about the story until you guys mentioned it. Yeah. I wondered. I never even thought about it until you guys mentioned it. And what did you think about it once it got mentioned? It's just like I just went with it. I didn't, like, you know, I knew my dad was out there. I knew it was like, you know, I knew they would probably believe it because, you know, my mom and my sister just never really liked Shanann. What was she doing? She was fighting. Why do you think she wasn't fighting? I don't know. It's, uh, maybe she was praying. Maybe she was just. Now I read, read the Bible. It said, you know, like you know, uh, or the scripture says, don't uh, uh, forgive these people for they do not know what they do. Mm -hmm. um, maybe she was saying that. I don't know what she was saying in her head, but she, you know, like. Like when you guys told me, like, take off your shirt and step check for defensive wounds, and like, you know, there wasn't going to be any. She didn't fight, and I don't know like, why. It's like, she didn't grab, could she grab your arms, I, or were I your just, arms pinned down? Or? I don't, not, not that I remember. I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think, like, I moved to where my knees were around her arms or anything, but it was just kind of like when I got on top of her and we, we started talking, it was that was it. <laughs> it's kind of like in my head. Or like in the back of my head that was going to happen and just like at the end of the conversation it was just like that's what happened mm -hmm. i just wish i could have let go did it seem like it was that long two to four minutes how long did it seem for you um, almost kind of felt like it was felt like it was longer almost because it felt like time was standing still it's kind of like i just saw my life disappearing before my eyes but it just like I couldn't let go it was like somebody else like like if you picture somebody else around you holding your hands holding you keep you from not not letting go I'm going to read a chronologic narrative of data extracted from the phone of Chris Watts Shannon Watts and Nicole Kessinger 
covering important text messages which law enforcement were able to recover. This includes the months of May, June, July, and August of 2018. These have been arranged, listed in their actual order of occurrence in time. These messages help us to see what was really going on at that time as true representations towards knowing and understanding the real communication that occurred. Tragically, there will never be another word spoken by the victims, but we can look back on factual messages, video recordings, written letters, and photographs to show us the victims and know who they were in a public sense. Now that's all that's left of them, other than the memories their family and friends hold within their hearts and minds. It can be a bit of an uphill battle, sifting out lies and confusion, but questioning the information and known communication is helpful to put together a true reflection of what was really going on then. Interestingly, although the detectives had some difficulty and delay in retrieving Kessinger's messages with Watts, they did obtain the data that showed she had searched the internet for the name of Shannon Watts on Friday, September the 1st of 2017. That's right, it's an odd piece of information considering that is a full year before the tragic events. Kessinger had only admitted to meeting in June of 2018 and possibly May. When she was questioned in August of 2018, she told the investigators she couldn't remember. She wasn't sure at that time she couldn't really recall exactly when she first met Chris. There has been talk of that date possibly being a typo, but as of now, there has been no correction in the discovery documents. It's become a sore spot for many of us. Suspicion and speculation have many people wondering why she would have Shannon's name in 2017, and in that case, it changes the scenario quite a bit, leaving the question open and many people asking where she had first come across Shannon and Chris Watts. To make this information easier to reference, I will also timestamp the beginning of each month, which will be listed in the details section for convenience, just in case you want to quickly jump forward for that part which interests you most. This will include text messages and phone conversations held between Chris, Shannon, Kessinger, and other friends and work colleagues. Also, conversations pertaining to events before and including August 13th of 2018. Please feel free to comment for clarification on any of the following information, and as always, your insights are welcome. During a review of data extracted from the phones belonging to Chris Watts, Shannon Watts and Nicole Kessinger, certain information was learned. Agent Darren Ford conducted logical extractions of data from these phones. In conversations with Ford, he advised the Northern Colorado Forensic Laboratory does not possess technology to perform physical data extractions from Apple devices. Thus, I discovered the extracted data is not inclusive of all data stored amongst the assorted applications within a given device, nor does activity involving those applications necessarily reflect in the data extracted. For example, Watts had a secret calculator application uploaded to his personal phone. This application, by all appearances, is an operable calculator. When the user enters a secret passcode, the application reveals its true purpose, a concealed storage device for photographs, videos, contacts, even a private browser. In mid-July of 2018, Watts began transferring images from his camera application into the secret calculator application. This activity is not reflected within the phone's timeline. Locating those transferred images proved challenging and was predicated on mere curiosity. I searched through the images stored within the data files featured in the Celebrite CB report 
locating an item not highlighted in the timeline, I reviewed the path within the file information and noticed it included the words secret calculator. Using the find feature, I searched the 12,000 images stored in the phone's memory using the keyword secret calculator. I located a vast collection of images otherwise undetected during my review that are stored within this application. Now jumping forward to the messages found, we start off with September the 1st of 2017 and that was the Friday like I said. That is when Kessinger searched the internet for the name Shannon Watts. Then on May 29th of 2018 at 15.40 hours, Shannon began filming in the kitchen of 2825 Saratoga Trail. She stepped in front of the camera briefly to show off her shirt with the embossed words, Oops, we did it again. When she stepped out of the camera's view, Dieter, the family dog, ran off to welcome Watts entering the home. As Watts walked into the kitchen, he halted mid-stride and stared in Shannon's direction. His confused expression transformed into a grin and he walked to her saying, we did it again. When Watts returned in view of the camera, he is holding a pregnancy test and they discussed the positive result. Watts leaned in, kissed Shannon and with a large grin says, I guess when you want to, it happens. Wow. 76 days later, Shannon, her unborn child, Bella and Celeste were no more. Now further along in that day, May 29th, Cassie and Josh, friends, told Watts they have completed and are submitting employment applications in Colorado. Josh added congratulations to Watts for Shannon's pregnancy. Jumping forward to June 14th, Watts on this day created nearly 200 contacts in his work phone. These included co-workers, Shannon, and Nikki Kessinger, his mistress. Kessinger's phone numbers included her work number and her mobile number. Then on June 17th, Watts told Tony Brown, a co-worker, thanks again for covering this weekend. Last weekend with the kids meant a lot. I owe you one. Then on June 19th, at 10.10 hours, Watts told Tony Brown, I have to check out by two today for a doctor appointment. If anything comes up later in the day, I will let you know. On June 22nd, Shannon and Watts traveled to San Diego to attend a Thrive convention. At 1507 hours, Watts created an entry in the contact list of his personal phone titled APC Health Safety Environmental. The phone number entered is 720-656-9605. This is Kessinger's number. At 1735 hours in San Diego with the Rosenbergs, Shannon and Watts stayed at the Seaport Tower Manchester Grand Hyatt and that evening ate at a restaurant named Season 52. Subsequent photographs taken over the next two days by this phone denote asserted coordinates around the San Diego Convention Center. On June 26th, Watts told Troy McCoy, a co-worker, I landed last night around 2 a.m. I'm around all day. If you need to ask me something, McCoy replied, okay, cool buddy, get some rest. Watts responded, lol, you're crazy, kids are out of control. June 27, 2018, Shannon and her daughters flew to North Carolina where they stayed with family for 42 days. On June 26, at 1725 hours, Shannon's phone received a calendar alert with her flight information. Flight from WN-137, Denver to RDU. On June 30th, Watts searched the internet for information on tickets to Bandemir Speedway. On July the 4th, at 0856 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a 19-minute conversation. At 2244 hours, 
Watts watched the Independence Day fireworks with Nick and Amanda Thayer, friends, in Thornton. He apparently stopped by their home afterwards. His phone connected to their router. On July the 5th, at 1424 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a two and a half minute conversation. At 1837 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a 13 minute conversation. She called him back moments later and held a nearly seven minute conversation. On July the 6th, at 7.48 hours, Josh Rosenberg asked Watts how bachelor life was going. Watts replied he was exercising a lot, working extra weekend shifts, and the time was going by fast. At 9.57 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a three-minute conversation. She called back shortly afterwards and held a nearly four-minute conversation. At 15.51 hours, Watts called Shannon and held an 11-minute conversation. At 16.51 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 3-minute conversation. At 18.35 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a nearly 8-minute conversation. So hang in there guys, there's a lot more information coming. At 8.52 hours, Shannon told Watts to call Vivint before I flip. Watts advised, they are sending a sensor for the garage door. I tried moving it like they said, and it didn't work. Then on July 7th, at 0009 hours, Kessinger called Watts and held a nearly two minute conversation. The first call between the two found in his phone, and that is July the 7th. Then at 500 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a five minute conversation. At 0549 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a three minute conversation. At 1919 hours, Watts' phone connected with a router at a Rusty Bucket restaurant. Again, that is on July the 7th. At 1801 hours, Watts' phone logged coordinates at the Orchard Town Center. This is at 144th Avenue, Westminster. I confirmed a Rusty Bucket is at this location and it is 14613 Orchard Parkway. At 1844 hours, Watts' phone connected with a router at the Crushed Red Restaurant. I confirmed one is located at 14643 Orchard Parkway. Then on July 8th at 0515 hours, Watts offered an excuse for not calling Shannon the night before. I'm sorry, Boo. I fell asleep as soon as I got home. That heat killed me yesterday. I love you so much. Next, at 0515 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a six minute conversation. Now, it's interesting that just before that excuse that he made, he had been out with Kessinger the previous night. Then, at 1644 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 22-minute conversation. The next day on July the 9th, at 0518 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 10-minute conversation. At 1611 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 14-minute conversation. Then at 1724 hours, Watts made an unanswered call to Shannon. She called back immediately and held a nearly nine-minute conversation. Then at 2016 hours, Shannon discussed how Watts' mother gave Celeste ice cream with nuts in the ingredients. Shannon felt this was done in defiance of Shannon's warnings of Celeste's food allergies. Shannon told Watts, you should call your dad and tell him you did not appreciate your mom putting your daughter at risk today, nor do you like that she teased our girls. You should also say you don't appreciate her saying they have to learn they can't always get what they want. Referring to ice cream, they are only two and four. Watts would reply, I will call him and tell him what I think about this. It's not effing cool at all because it is the kids. I will set this right. Then on July the 10th at 1722 hours, Shannon called Watts and held an eight-minute conversation. At 1932 hours, Shannon asked Watts 
You okay? It's like you don't want to talk. I kept trying to talk and I had to dig it out of you. Watts replied, I'm fine, baby. The last few days at work have put a lot of responsibility on me with new people. I didn't mean to seem short, boo. I love you to the moon and back. So now, new people, is he talking about Kessinger here? That's just my thought, but anyways, it continues on. Shannon responded, I miss you and I feel like you just want to work out and run. Watts claimed running helps clear my head. It's a way to free it all, he says. Shannon didn't buy the excuse. I wish my husband wanted to talk to me. Next, on July 11th, at 5.20 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 7-minute conversation. At 16.20 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 13-minute conversation. The next day, on July the 12th, at 0446 hours, Shannon made two unanswered calls to Watts. At 5.16 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a 10-minute conversation. On July 13th, at 0525 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a one-minute conversation. At 0532 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a four-minute conversation. At 724 hours, Watts logged into Facebook. Again, that is July the 13th. Then at 1621 hours, Watts called Shannon and held an 8-minute conversation. He called her back moments later and held a 12-minute conversation. Then on July the 14th, Kessinger and Watts visited a Mustang museum in Boulder together. At 0958 hours, Kessinger called Watts and held a nearly 5-minute conversation. Now this is still on July the 14th. At 1019 hours, Watts logged into Facebook at 10.56 hours to 11.38 hours. Watts took photographs of assorted vehicles. Metadata proves he was at the Shelby American Collection at 15.20 Chaparral Court in Boulder. Then at 12.46 hours to 13.08 hours, Shannon made four unanswered calls to Watts. At 13.17 hours, Watts answered her fifth call and held a minute and a half conversation. Next, at 13.25 hours, Watts searched the internet for 24-karat bistro and the restaurant's menu. I confirmed this restaurant is located at 578 Brick Street in Erie or 10 miles south of the Shelby Museum. At 14.36 hours to 15.27 hours, Shannon continued to make unanswered calls to Watts. At 15.37 hours, Kessinger called Watts and held a nearly five-minute conversation. At 16.02 hours, Kessinger called Watts and held a 43-minute conversation. At 16.26 hours to 17.23 hours, during that call and just afterwards, Shannon made four more unanswered calls to Watts. At 7.23 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a 10-minute call. Then, at 18.14 hours, Watts spent nearly two hours online researching Dave Bunk Minerals. This is a business, and it is a mineral dealer located in Arvada and Dioptase. This is a mineral name. I hope I said that correctly. It is um, a translucent emerald colored mineral. And that is what he was searching for two hours online. Next, on July the 15th, at 7.16 hours, Watts called Shannon and held an eight-minute conversation. Then at 11.37 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a nearly five-minute conversation. At 12.36 hours, Watts called Vivint and held a 20-minute conversation. He entered Vivint into his contacts following the call. At 12.50 hours, Watts took three images of his basement from different perspectives to capture the layout. At 16.19 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a six-minute conversation. At 16.35 hours, Watts took three more images of his basement from different perspectives. I believe he was documenting the work 
he spent cleaning and organizing the basement, as evidenced in the photos. The following day on July 16th, at 5.33 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a nearly five-minute conversation. Then at 8.35 hours, Watts took three photographs from an Anadarko corporate office in Platteville, one of which was a sunflower near what appears to be his work truck. This would not be the last time he took photographs of flowers. I suspect he took these four and shared them with Kessinger. She has an affinity with Flora and had a wide assortment of flower pictures in her phone. At 12.26 hours to 12.28 hours, Watts resumed his internet search of Dave Bunk Minerals. That is where he was searching for the Dioptes, the green mineral. Next, at 13.29 hours to 13.33 hours, Watts searched Google on topics like touch-up paint bottles Toyota, Toyota dealership Highway 85, and Toyota dealership Brighton. And Kessinger owned a Toyota. Next, at 15.46 hours to 16.24 hours, Shannon and Watts exchanged several calls, holding nearly 33 minutes in conversations. On July 17th, at 5.22 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a five minute and a half conversation. Then at 10.12 hours to 11.46 hours, Watts took several images of trees and grassland flowers in an open prairie just north of Roggen. At 16.37 hours, Watts took a photograph of his new work boots, identical to those found in the Lexus during the search. On July 18th, at 5.26 hours, Watts answered a call from Shannon and held a four-minute conversation. Then at 5.34 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a nearly four-minute conversation. At 9.46 hours, for the first time, Watts transferred assorted images of Kessinger, some semi-nude, into the secret calculator application. Certain images were taken by Watts, as evidenced by his reflection in a mirror in the background. Now again, that is July the 18th, that it's saying that that was the first time that he transferred the images to that secret application. Additional images of interest were found in this application with no associated dates are listed below. Many are duplicative of others soon to be discovered in this new review. These photographs include images of Kessinger in various stages of undress, their trip to the Great Sand Dunes, and other assorted pictures. At 1926 hours, Watts searched Google for Shorehaven, North Myrtle Beach. My search found a long list of companies offering vacation rentals in this area. Then on July the 19th, at 5.34 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a nearly 10-minute conversation. At 10.41 hours, Watts called an unidentified contact, no name, no number, and held a 7-minute conversation. At 20.35 hours, Watts logged into Facebook. On July 20th, at 0159 hours, Watts logged into Snapchat and its Toyo page group dot peekaboo. Next, at 1704 hours, Watts searched Google for the best beer in Colorado. Then, uh, at 1709 hours, Watts asked Christina, one of Shannon's friends, Do you want me to talk solely about the experience with Burn or say I've been on Thrive for over two years, lost 65 pounds, and then go into the Burn experience? Question mark. Christina would reply, the experience with burn, the difference it made, and what you have felt. Call starts at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. At 7.23 hours to 19.57 hours, Watts searched Google for a CVS pharmacy in Westminster. DC Oaks Brew House and Eatery, the Bandemir Ticket Office for the NHRA national schedule for July 21st of 2018, and 24-hour fitness locations in Westminster and Thornton. 
Next, at 1812 hours, Watts transferred assorted images of Kessinger, some semi-nude, into his secret calculator application. They included the following image below. This is one where she's wearing a floral uh, peach dress, and they're standing beside each other. Next, on July 21st, Watts and Kessinger went to Bandemir and the Rooftop Tavern in Morrison. At 7.43 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 20-minute conversation. At 10.34 hours, Watts transferred images of Kessinger into his secret calculator application. Then at 13.58 hours, not found in Watts' phone, he sent a message to Shannon, headed out to the track boo, I will text you when I get there. With no mention of this in his previous messages to Shannon, Watts likely provided a concocted ruse regarding his plans to visit the Speedway via an earlier phone call at 1818 hours to 2039 hours. Using his phone, Watts filmed assorted clips of dragsters at Bandemir. Throughout this time frame, Watts searched Google on topics like top fuel dragster burnout and top fuel dragster goes airborne. Then on July the 22nd, at 052 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a 12-minute conversation. Shannon called him back afterwards and held an additional 14-minute conversation. At 900 hours, Watts searched Google for a Home Depot near me, Broomfield. At 1348 hours, Watts searched Google for Spanish dancing near me red wine made in Argentina, and the Cheesecake Factory. Then at 1525 hours, Shannon called Watts and held an 18-minute conversation. She called back afterwards and held an additional 21-minute conversation. Next on July 23rd at 540 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 2-minute conversation. At 825 hours, Watts transferred an image of Kessinger into his secret calculator application. At 1702 hours, Watts called Nicole Utoff, Shannon's friend, and this is actually Nicole Atkinson. That is her maiden name, I believe. At 1736 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a nine minute conversation. At 1802 hours, Watts searched Google for clean eating restaurants near me and near Erie. Watts also searched for 24 Karat Bistro and Lazy Dog Restaurant. Next on July 24th at 554 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a five minute conversation. At 812 hours, Watts transferred a nude image of Kessinger into his secret calculator application. Then at 1317 hours, Kessinger searched Google for man I'm having an affair with says he will leave his wife. Next, at 1549 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a nearly 10-minute conversation. After that, at 1606 hours to 1645 hours, which is about 40 minutes, Sandra Rutsa called Watts 12 different times, connecting on occasion and held roughly 30 minutes of conversation. Next, at 17.30 hours, Shannon asked Watts if he was alive. Now again, this is on July the 24th. So she asked Watts if he was alive. Watts replied, Tire light came on when I was leaving King Supers last night. Got the tires aired back up. Spent a lot of time looking for anything in it nothing at all. So this looks like it's an excuse um, and that he was with Kessinger. But then Shannon responded, you could have answered or texted back, thought something happened, but you don't care about others' feelings or think you're with another girl or worse. No consideration for others. All right. So she was suspecting that either something was wrong because he wasn't answering and even her mother then called to see where Chris Watts was. Then at 1728 hours, Watts searched Google for Victoria's Secret 
at the Orchard Town Center. Next, at 1802 hours, Shannon told Watts, I realized during this trip what's missing in our relationship. It's only one-way emotions and feelings. I can't come back like this. I need you to meet me halfway. You don't consider others at all, nor think about others' feelings. Now again, this is on July the 24th. Watts replied that he was sorry and he loves her. Shannon responded, I tried to give you space. But while you're working and living the bachelor life, I'm carrying our third and fighting with our kids daily and trying to work and make money. It's not hard texting love you and miss you. If you don't mean it, then I get it, but we need to talk. I kept looking at my phone all night and no response from you. Like seriously, we didn't just start dating yesterday. We've been together eight years and have two and a half kids together. So this is when she started suspecting something because he didn't answer all night and she did mention that she thought there might be another girl or worse. Then at 2010 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 17 minute conversation. On July 25th at 536 hours, Watts made an unanswered call to Shannon. Two minutes later, Shannon called him back and held a nearly 11-minute conversation. Next, between 8.41 hours and 12.07 hours, Watts searched Google on the following topics. When to say I love you. When to say I love you for the first time in a new relationship. What do you feel when someone tells you they love you? How does it feel when someone says I love you? And these are again on July the 25th. Next, at 1635 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 23-minute conversation. During that conversation, Kessinger called Watts and left a voicemail. Following an eerily disconcerting, childlike giggle, she told Watts, I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back. Bye. Immediately after ending his call with Shannon, Watts called Kessinger briefly. At 1831 hours, Watts searched Google for sand dunes weather. At 1858 hours, Kessinger called Watts and told a 14-minute conversation. Then, on July 26th, at 530 hours, Kessinger called Watts and told a 3-minute conversation. At 540 hours, Watts made an unanswered call to Shannon. She returned his call three minutes later and they had a five minute conversation. At 11.28 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a six minute conversation. At 11.50 hours, Watts searched Google for GIT. Now if you check Wikipedia, it says that GIT is software for tracking changes in any set of files usually used for coordinating work among programmers, collaboratively developing source code during software development. So that could be what he was looking up, possibly. Next, at 1601 hours, Watts called 800-848-9136 and held a four-minute conversation. I called the number and confirmed it connects with Chase Bank. At 1628 hours, Watts accessed myprepaidcenter.com. I visited the website, which services universal prepaid visa cards. Next, at 1640 hours, Shannon called Watts and held an 18-minute conversation. Simultaneously to that call, Watts transferred a nude selfie of Kessinger into his secret calculator application. At 1701 hours, immediately afterwards, Watts called Vivint briefly. At 1716 hours, Watts called Vivint a second time and held a 25-minute conversation. At 1839 hours, Watts called Shannon an additional time, holding a nearly 5-minute conversation. At 1913 hours, Watts searched Google for Lazy Dog in Erie. At 2000 hours, Watts visited myprepaidcenter.com, 
Then on July 27th, at 16.44 hours, Shannon called Watts and held an 11-minute conversation. At 20.48 hours, Watts searched Google for prices on wine bottle openers. Next, on July 28th, Watts and Kessinger spent the night at the Great Sand Dunes. At 1100 hours, Watts called 719-256-4315 briefly. I confirmed the number list to the Valley View Hot Springs at the Orient Land Trust in the San Luis Valley. Their website boasts camping and lodging just north of the Great Sand Dunes National Park. At 11.34 hours, Watts searched the internet for Rio Grande National Forest, Zabata Falls Campground, located seven miles south of the Great Sand Dunes. He made a brief call. He made a brief call to the campgrounds moments later. At 12.53 hours, Watts took this photograph of the tent, which they had set up there in between the trees, and you can see it there on the ground, and metadata confirms the image was taken at the Zabata Falls campground. In addition, he shot a brief video of that same scene. The song playing in the background is Forever Girl by a John Langston. The lyrics tend towards a ballad. At 1344 hours, Shannon made an unanswered call to Watts. He made two attempts to call her back roughly 10 minutes later. At 1429 hours to 1855 hours, Watts took assorted photographs of the landscape at the sand dunes. Amongst these is a video of Kessinger speaking into the camera. Thank you so much for coming out here with me, Christopher. I am having a wonderful time. You mean a lot to me, and I'm glad you're having a blast. Next, on July 29th, at 9.22 hours to 10.43 hours, Watts continued taking photographs of landscape near the Great Sand Dunes. At 10.55 hours, Watts told Shannon, finished the hike, packing up and heading home. At 10.38 hours, Watts transferred images of Kessinger to include a full nude selfie to his secret calculator application. At 12.36 hours to 14.21 hours, Shannon made four unanswered calls to Watts. At 14.25 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a brief two-minute conversation. Throughout the day, co-workers exchanged group text messages regarding scheduling for the following workday. Watts was uncharacteristically unresponsive. At 18.20 hours, Watts finally replied, Copy, sorry, been out of the house all day. Next, at 17.14 hours, Troy McCoy asked Watts if he was taking the following day off. Watts eventually responded, I'm working tomorrow. At 17.30 hours, Shannon made two more unanswered calls to Watts. At 17.49 hours, having not heard from Watts, Shannon asked, I'm assuming you're safe considering it's been 3.5 hours. Watts replied, there was a car fire and the Renaissance Festival traffic in Colorado Springs. Just got our car, headed home. At 1924 hours, Watts answered Shannon's call and held a 14-minute conversation. At 1939 hours, immediately afterwards, Shannon told Watts, Sorry you're so tired, but I haven't talked to you in 48 hours and I had a hard weekend. Glad I have you to talk to. Continuing the sarcasm, she added, if you care. At 1949 hours, Watts replied, I'm sorry you had a hard weekend, boo. I will make it up to you, I promise. I'm sorry, I'm out of it tonight. Shannon retorted, it would have been nice for my husband to show interest in how the girls and I are, and the baby. I'm done with begging for you to talk. See you Tuesday. She added, you're out of it from playing. At 2036 hours, Watts visited MyPrepaidCenter.com. On July 30th, at 539 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a nearly six-minute conversation. Then at 811 hours, Shannon sent Watts an insurance identification card issued by USAA 
for their 2016 Lexus RX. The effective dates are August 15th, 2018 through February 15th, 2019. At 918 hours, Shannon sent Watts three images of swelling to the right ankle of one of their daughters. Her face was not captured. Watts commented, it looks like her ankle is dislocated in that one picture. Shannon agreed and said, she may need special shoes. At 16.17 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 19-minute conversation. Next, at 16.44 hours, Kessinger called Watts and left a voicemail. Intermixed with her creepy giggles, she asked Watts to call her back. Okay, so that is the second time with those giggles. Then we have at 17.14 hours, Watts called Vivint and held a 10-minute conversation. At 17.39 hours to 17.49 hours, Shannon asked Watts what they said. Although his call with Vivint ended nearly 39 minutes earlier, Watts responded he was still on the phone. Resetting settings and sensitivity should be good now. I will monitor it. At 18.31 hours, Watts searched Google for the songs by a reggae band named Through the Roots. Watts then searched lyrics to their song, Down to Earth. At 18.37 hours, Watts searched Google for a country singer named Cannon Smith and his song, Love You Like That. At 18.38 hours, Watts searched Google for love letters. At 19.57 hours, Watts sent a message to Shannon, letting Dieter out and going to bed, boo. Love you. Shannon called him minutes later, and they spoke briefly. On July 31st, Watts flew to North Carolina. At 3.22 hours, Watts took a photograph of parking signs at Denver International Airport and sent messages, presumably to Shannon, at airport. At 4.08 hours, Watts began transferring a mass of assorted images of Kessinger and their trip to the Great Sand Dunes into his secret calculator application. In addition, Watts transferred two videos from that trip into his secret calculator application. Both videos were shot by Watts as Kessinger surfed down a sand dune. Watts made comments like, so damn sexy. At 4.46 hours, Watts told Shannon, on the plane, love you boo. Shannon called him immediately and held a two-minute conversation. At 4.50 hours, immediately afterwards, Shannon told Watts, you never ever listen to me. She asked, how much a day? Watts sent her a photograph of the parking sign and advised, $16. Shannon asked which lot and Watts said the East Economy lot. Shannon replied, $130 we can't spend at the beach. Shannon asked Watts to text her when he lands in Atlanta. Watts agreed. At 4.52 hours, Watts deleted Kessinger's APC Health Safety Environmental contact from his phone. At 4.53 hours, Shannon gave Watts instructions on how to schedule a ride from both Lyft and Uber. At 5.05 hours, Watts received a calendar alert, flight WN656 from Den to Atlanta. During this data extraction, Agent Ford programmed the phone to provide timestamps using UTC-6 or Mountain Standard Time. I will continue to use those timestamps and refrain from adjusting for Eastern Standard Time. At 7.57 hours, Watts told Shannon that he had landed in Atlanta. Watts advised his connecting flight departs at 10.45 hours. At 8.45 hours, Watts received a calendar alert, flight to Raleigh and flight from Atlanta to RDU. At 10.18 hours, Watts told Shannon that he just landed in Raleigh Shannon asked him to let her know when you are coming down escalator so I can record girls. Watts replied, okay boo. Then at 2149 hours, Shannon asked Watts, can you set alarm for five and wake me please? 
Watts replied, yep, I got it, love you. Shannon reciprocated. On August the 1st, at 1851 hours, Watts took assorted photographs of his children on carnival rides at the Pavilion Park in Myrtle Beach, North Carolina. On August the 2nd, at 11.38 hours to 13.41 hours, a video and photographs were taken of the children playing on trampolines at the Pavilion Park. At 17.41 hours, Watts transferred this image into his secret calculator application. This is an image of a necklace. I am certain Watts communicated far more with Kessinger than is reflected in his phone data, perhaps facilitated through the secret calculator application. It became apparent he was receiving assorted nude images of Kessinger that she was taking by herself and sending to Watts, which he then stashed into that application to prevent Shannon from ever seeing them. At 2240 hours, Watts transferred images of Kessinger into his secret calculator application. On August the 3rd of 2018, at 2123 hours, Watts transferred images of Kessinger into his secret calculator application. On August the 4th of 2018, at 0045 hours, for over two hours, Kessinger searched Google for wedding dresses. At 336 hours, in a lengthy message, Shannon told Watts, Truth came out last night. I didn't create no dagger between you and your dad. That was done by your mom and your dad, and I won't change a thing. My daughter's life is way more important, and you better believe I wanted to say a whole lot more than I did, but I was being the bigger person and protecting Bella. I didn't tell your dad not to come to the party. I didn't tell him not to text or call your daughter on her birthday. I didn't tell him to start acting like he only has two grandkids instead of four. I didn't block your family on Facebook. He did. Myself and your kids have nothing to say to them. They do. They owe your kids their life. Your parents' home isn't a safe zone. Your mom isn't safe. You can let them tell you what you want. But I didn't tell anyone to stop loving your kids or stop acting like it. He did that, not me. You can believe I created this dagger, but I didn't do that. I stood up for our kids. I advocated and protected our children. I don't ever want to hear, I'm sorry, I killed your kid because I was stupid. That would kill me. These kids are my world, and I have to protect them from the evil of the world. I shouldn't have to protect them from the evil family. Our kids deserve the same love and attention the other kids get, nothing less. I'm not accepting I'm sorry from your mom because she doesn't mean it and she knew what she was doing. I made it very clear not to eat it around Celeste because she doesn't understand. Way before that happened, she's evil and willing to risk your daughter's life just to get under my skin. You and your dad are no different if you are okay with her behavior. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm not crazy. I just love my kids way too much. From the day I left, you never said I missed you before I said it. Something changed when I left. You may be happier alone, and that's fine. You can be alone. This pregnancy, you have failed to acknowledge it or to acknowledge how I'm feeling. The first trimester is the scariest and the most dangerous, yet we can lose this baby at any point till delivery. I'm not going to be treated this way for having the balls to protect our family and kids. I should get a gold medal for handling it the way I did because I had a lot of choice words I wanted to say to her and your dad for his stupidity. No one stands up to your mom and your dad for that. He's just as guilty by not doing anything. I have nothing to do with him stop sharing memories with his grandkids. What does that have to do with me? They are effing with our kids' feelings, and that I'm not okay with. I am their mother and I will protect them. I have enough to worry about 
with the world out there. I'm not going to worry about family. I will just remove it. Next, at 5.13 hours, Shannon added, I also don't care what you do. If you want to go hang with your parents today, by all means do so, but without us. Don't put it on me why you can't go. You are your own person. At 7.26 hours, Watts replied to Shannon for the first time, These kids mean the world to me, and always will. Yes, my mom truly screwed up in a huge way, more than a huge way. I don't know what I would have done if something happened to Cece. These kiddos are the light of my life, and seeing their sweet, incredible smiles and playfulness makes me smile every day. I'm sorry for the way I've been acting. It's just been in my head, and I haven't been right at all. So that was August the 4th, and that lengthy message was like a letter that she sent. It was at 3.36 hours. And then he responded. It was finally at 7.26 hours. So that's like hours later, he finally replies. Then next, at 7.31 hours, she quickly responds to that and says, Okay, Shannon responded with two messages to Watts. Yes, that I created this dagger between you and your dad, and that wasn't me. That was them. I protected our daughter from their stupidity. They created that, and you belong with them thinking otherwise. I didn't tell your dad to remove himself from the kid's life. I did and do not deserve to be treated the way you have. I defended our daughter. At 7.48 hours, Watts replied to Shannon, Yes, you protected our daughter, and I thank you for that a million times a million. I don't think they are innocent in any of this. They do want to be in the kid's life, and I'm not sure they even know how to do right now. They should have swallowed whatever they needed to and come to Cece's birthday party and called her and shouldn't have blocked all social media contact with them. I don't care what they do to us, just as long as they love and respect the kids. I'm not used to not having a relationship with my dad. I should have just called him before it got to this point where it got in my head. I didn't, and that's my fault. At 8.03 hours, Shannon responded, Why should you beg them to be in their life? They pick up the phone and apologize for starters. They show up to her birthday, especially since we were an hour away. They did this. They make the effort. You blame me for this so-called dagger between you and him. F that. You are just like them. Believe what he tells you and move back home where you were appreciated when I met you. No one ever protected you from your mom and someone should have before me. I'm done being the bad guy in all this. Especially when I had more balls to stand up for you a long time ago with them. My bad for thinking you deserve better. Not my kids are in the pick and I'm done. Okay, so it's getting really heated at this point and um, that's not perfect the way that things are being typed up here. Next, at 11.53 hours, continuing this conversation, Shannon told Watts, While it's on my mind, if I'm in the wrong, that's one thing. But I'm not here and you not standing up for us and the girls is not cool. You just make it so they feel they did no wrong and brush it under the rug. I will never trust your parents alone with our kids, ever. This is the week we started dating eight years ago. They ruin everything special. I won't forgive you or them for that. I'm tired of it. I'm the one that takes care of you, not them. You make me feel like complete SHIT these last several weeks, especially this week, and I'm not okay with it, and I won't change my ways when it comes to our kids, and I always defended you, always. So here she refers to the eight years, and she says that they ruin everything special. So I guess she's referring to some other issues that they had. Then at 11.56 hours, Shannon added, I'm not asking you to choose who to be with. I shouldn't have to ask you to choose right from wrong. You are not happy. Then you know where to go. Worst summer ever. Next, at 14.10 hours, Kessinger searched Google for Watts and Shannon's Facebook accounts. 
Then at 15.04 hours to 17.13 hours, video and photographs were taken of the girls back on the trampolines at the Pavilion Park. On August the 5th, at 15.16 hours, Shannon asked Watts, Are you wanting to go to see just Mama tomorrow? And I believe this is the grandmother. Or family too. Watts replied, I was hoping both. If that's okay too. I want to see Mama in the morning, if possible. You wanted the girls to see her too, right? Shannon responded, If both, then that's fine. But alone? If just Mama, we will go. Then saw her twice, and they can go again, but I'm standing strong with your family. You can use the truck and see both, but I just need to know. I'm not going to be the reason you don't see them. So if you do, you just go. At 15.28 hours, Watts replied, I know they would love to see Mama one more time. I bet Mama would love to see them too, since she remembers them. I don't want to leave anyone without a car here, though either. Should I have someone pick me up at the nursing home so the girls can still see Mama? In two messages, Shannon responded, I'm not going to be where there's a chance we will run into your family. I'm not kidding, Christopher. I'm having a bad experience these last few days with my pregnancy, and I'm spotting. I'm not dealing with it. Have your parents pick you up when the kids go down tonight, then, and do what you need to do. At 15.33 hours, Watts concluded, I want kids to see Mama. I will make sure there is zero chance anyone will see them. Then, at 20.28 hours, Shannon sent Watts a screenshot of a quote by Isaac Kub Verano. I believe that's how you say it. And it goes on like this. Husbands, stand up for your wife and protect her from the attacks that come from people close to you. Let your family and friends know that when it comes to your wife and marriage, there is a line they cannot cross. If you have to take sides, then always take your wife's side. From the day you said, I do, your wife displaces your parents, friends, and siblings. Apart from God, your wife now occupies and assumes the privileged first place of honor in your life. Oftentimes, it requires that you lovingly stand up for your wife in front of your parents, especially our mother. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no mother, father, brother, sister, friend, or boss separate. Okay, so she didn't include mistress, though, but that was what was happening then. Next, at 22, 24 hours, two hours later, Shannon wrote, I don't know how you fell out of love with me in 5.5 weeks, or if this has been going on for a long time, but you don't plan another baby if you're not in love. Kids don't deserve a broken family. I left you. You couldn't take your hands off me. You show up and I have to practically ask for a kiss in the airport. So she's questioning what, what the heck's going on so quickly with everything messed up. Then at 22.34 hours, Shannon added, Being away from you, it's not the help I missed because I can handle that. It was exhausting, but with school, that's not hard. I miss the smell of you, you touching me when I'm cooking, you touching me in bed, you touching me, period. I missed holding you, snuggling with you. I missed eating with you, watching TV with you. I missed staring at you, making love with you, everything about you. I couldn't wait to touch you, hold you, kiss you, make love to you, smell you, laugh with you. I couldn't wait to celebrate eight years with you. If you are done, don't love me, don't want to work this out not happy anymore, and only staying because of kids, I need you to tell me. Then at 2300 hours, Shannon asked Watts, would you stay with me if we didn't have kids? Next at 2309 hours, Shannon asked Watts, I just don't get it. You don't fall out of love in five weeks. Minutes later, she pondered, how can you sleep? Our marriage is crumbling in front of us and you can sleep. Next, on August the 6th, at 6.13 hours, 
Watts searched Google for the distance from the moon to Earth. At 6.20 hours, proving messages have been deleted from Watts' phone, Shannon noted in several messages, Your only response last night was, I don't want to lose the kids. You used me to just have a boy. Only reason you wanted another kid. I can't handle this, and you are okay with it. Why didn't you just tell me you were done? Why get me pregnant? So she is concerned about their marriage, and he, for some reason, is searching the distance from the moon to earth. Okay, next, at 6.22 hours, Watts replied, I'm not just staying because of the kids. They are my light, and that will not change. I didn't fall out of love in five weeks. That's impossible. Okay, then he says, I don't want to erase eight years just like that. I'm not sure what's in my head. I don't know if it's my parents, the third pregnancy, if I'm just scared, or what. I didn't use you. In Shannon's phone, the conversation continued. At 6.22 hours, Shannon replied, That's what you said last night. You can't even say why you're married to me. That's a stab in the heart. You didn't say you didn't want to lose us. You said you didn't want to lose the kids. Watts responded, I don't want to lose anyone. Shannon responded, This has been the worst week of my life. We were supposed to celebrate love and family, but instead, hate and whatever you call it. I'm not willing to watch something dangerous happen to one of our kids with your family for you to wake up. They will give you sorry excuses today. I don't know what to say. I don't want to come. Shannon continued, You don't see you or how you're treating me. Eight years of love. And you're treating me horribly. I fell deeper in love with you this summer. You fell out. That's not love. Love falls deeper in love when apart, not out. You don't love me. Or you have a horrible way of showing it. You haven't fought for me this week. It's only the kids. At 1328 hours, Watts transferred an image of Kessinger into his secret calculator application. At 1843 hours, Watts told Shannon that his parents did not want to drive him to her location. Shannon asked if Watts wanted her to come pick him up, and Watts replied, It's up to you. He's cool bringing me back first thing in the morning early. At 18.45 hours, to this, Shannon replied, We effing leave tomorrow. I need help. Shannon told Watts she was on her way to pick him up. Apparently, after some cajoling, Watts advised his father has agreed to drive him to her location presently. At 20.41 hours, Watts took photographs of various images inside his parents' home, including a family portrait. At 21.39 hours, Shannon told Watts, I was trying to get you to effing hug me, make me feel safe. This is much deeper than lack of conversation. Make me feel like everything is going to be okay. Watts replied, it will be okay. This will get all fixed. Shannon responded, no, I don't need words, damn it. You just told me you don't want this baby. At 21.45 hours, Watts replied to this, I'm scared, okay? You wanted the truth and I told you how I felt. Shannon replied, You hold me after that conversation. You hold me. If you want this to effing last, you make me feel safe after that bomb. Don't you get it? Shannon added, How many times do I have to ask you to hold me? You hate me that much? Watts eventually replied, I don't hate you. I will fix this. It will be better. Shannon noted, You didn't answer me, and added, I'm begging you to hold me, and you still can't. Watts replied, I don't know where my head is at. I will fix it, though. At 22.16 hours, Shannon wrote, This isn't the only thing. This doesn't get your head all screwed up. Something changed in the last five weeks. Something you won't say. So it seems like she's on to him that, that he's just not coming out with it. Then at 22.33 hours, 
Shannon continued, all of these asking for you to talk to me. You falling asleep at seven or eight. Don't tell me it's me. It's not communication. You're not telling me something. So she's referring to all of the messages and added to this message were assorted screenshots from Shannon's phone of previous text messages with Watts in which he offered excuses for not calling her. Most of them had been featured in this review. None were found in Watts' phone. So basically, he was deleting things, but they were still there on Shannon's phone. Next, on August 7th of 2018, at 5.17 hours, Shannon told Addie Maloney, her friend, Chris told me last night he's scared to death about this third baby, and he's happy with just Bella and Celeste, and doesn't want another baby. Addie comforted Shannon, telling her Watts is just scared, and everything will be fine once the baby is born. Shannon replied, He has changed. I don't know who he is. He hasn't touched me all week, kissed me, talked to me, except for when I'm trying to figure out what is wrong. He's been distant since I left. Later in their conversation, Shannon told Addie, I told him last night, I don't feel safe with him after what he said about the baby. And if he loves me, he would hold me and tell me it would be okay. Give me something. And he did nothing but go to bed. Then at 1626 hours, Shannon told Watts, something else is wrong that you're not saying because lack of communication doesn't cause you to not be present or touch me or love me. Besides, the lack of communication hasn't been with me in six weeks. This effing sucks. I really don't want to leave here. At 1710 hours, Watts received a calendar alert. Flight WN1643 from RDU to DEN. At 2258 hours, Watt's work phone reconnected with Netgear 27 router, likely the router in their home. On August the 8th, Watts returned to work. Then, at 724 hours, Sarah Nudd, a friend, asked Shannon if they were doing any better. Shannon replied, no, it's been so bad and I don't know what to do. He told me he doesn't want this baby and he's happy with just Bella and Celeste. He thought he wanted another one. I'm so sick to my stomach. Tried to have sex with him last night just to see if that would help him, and he rejected me. Shannon said she hasn't cried this hard ever. Shannon added, He said he feels there's lack of communication, and it's not for me. I sent him 12 texts over the month begging him to talk to me. He fell asleep at 7 to 8 p.m. Shannon told Sarah, I tried talking to him after rejection last night and me crying for an hour alone on couch. He slept. I kicked him out of the bed and I refused to sleep on the couch anymore this week. Told him this morning to not come home today if he can't tell me the damn truth on what the hell is wrong. So this is on August the 8th that she tells him that. Then Shannon continued, We are supposed to go to an ultrasound tonight, and he doesn't want the baby. He'd abort it if I said it was okay. Then at 8.06 hours, Shannon told Sarah, He said he's not having an affair. Sarah asked if Shannon is certain of this, and Shannon replied, Honestly, no, but what else would make him do a complete 360? We couldn't get enough of each other before I left. Then at 8.52 hours, Josh Rosenberg asked Watts if he was excited for the ultrasound. Today's the day, right? Watts replied, he just returned to work and added, yep, today's the day, I'm excited. Watts confirmed the ultrasound was at 1900 hours. At 5.11 hours, Watts made an unspecified modification to Shannon's contact information in his work phone. At 19.25 hours, Kessinger searched Google on topics related to marrying your mistress. So she's thinking about marriage. 
Next, at 2154 hours, Shannon told Utoff, which is Nicole Atkinson and Cassie Rosenberg, he said, we are not compatible anymore. He refused to hug me, said he thought another baby would fix his feelings, said he refused couples counseling. Shannon elaborated. He said he had a lot of time to reflect his feelings. Shannon added, he said he's going to work it out, but said she doesn't know how when he won't agree to counseling. Her friends offered support and suggestions to work this out. So she is still, you know, really wanting to, her marriage to work out. Even though she's frustrated with him, she still wants them to stay together and she's trying to find ways that they can get along somehow. Next, at 2157 hours, Josh begged Watts, Bro, I'm waiting so patiently, lol. Don't leave me hanging. Watts replied, lol, envelope is sealed until next week. Josh asked if they were going to hold a reveal, and Watts said yes. At 2219 hours, Shannon told Utah and Cassie, I will fight for full custody. Shannon said Watts told her he doesn't want to divorce right away. So there must have been some conversation that the two of them had where that was mentioned. Next, at 2240 hours, Shannon told the women, I can't afford three kids alone in Colorado. Shannon said their current home loan is on Chris's name. Her friends rallied around Shannon. At 2308 hours, Shannon searched Google on topics like emotion-focused therapy and couples therapy. Next, on August the 9th, Watts took the day off from work and Shannon left for Arizona. Now, this is a Friday, Friday, August the 9th, so Watts is taking that day off of work. Next, at 2.54 hours, Shannon told Addie that Watts refuses to hold her and has told Shannon it is because he's not there. He can't. Shannon told Addie, I cancel gender reveal. Nikki is going to tell me today. I need happy news right now. I said to him, how is this a few months? We were so intimate and what I thought in love when I left. He said he had a lot of time to think. Addie asked if Shannon has gone through Watt's phone, asking if he was having an affair. Shannon replied, I did. He denied. No, I didn't look. He's deleting messages from his dad. I'm sure he's not that stupid. Addie noted, none of this makes sense. It's not Chris. Frequently, throughout the day, Shannon searched the internet for couples counselors. She also accepted a prayer chain focused on their relationship. At 6.09 hours, Shannon asked Watts, Do you want to find out together with me tonight on baby's gender? His reply is not found in his phone, but Shannon soon commented on his answer. Loved, yes. At 9.20 hours, a log entry appears for the secret calculator in Watts' phone. At 10.06 hours, Shannon shared an ultrasound image of her unborn son with Sarah Nudd. At 11.44 hours, this image was taken by Watt's phone, which he sent to Shannon. She replied, don't know what to think about this. Now that is that image with the doll covered with a blanket on that black couch, which has those two orange or red pillows. So here, it's, it's saying that actually this was taken on Watt's phone. So, continuing on, at 1337 hours, Shannon sent a photograph to Sarah Nudd. The image is of this letter she wrote to Watts. Now, this is, I believe, a two or three page letter with that, which I did already read. And so I will link that video for the letter. And uh, it's talking about all of her feelings and everything. And she leaves that for him on the counter for him to read. Shannon expressed hopes Watts would respond with a letter of his own. Then Shannon told Sarah that Watts has agreed to go away next weekend, just us. 
Shannon said a friend has agreed to watch the kids. Next, at 1344 hours, Shannon asked Watts, Why did you cancel your Facebook account? He did not respond. At 1507 hours, Shannon asked Watts, Can you be there Monday to drop Bella off with me to her first day of kindergarten? Watts replied, I can make that happen. Now that is the Monday when they were all discovered missing. Next, at 1545 hours, Shannon received a confirmation from Amazon that a book titled Hold Me Tight, Seven Conversations for a Lifetime of Love would be delivered on August the 10th of 2018. At 1937 hours, Watts told Troy McCoy that he was taking tomorrow off and added, I will meet up with you for the fire stick sometime tomorrow if that's cool. McCoy said that was fine. At 2017 hours, Shannon told Addie that she was talking with Watts presently, apparently texting simultaneously. Addie asked what the gender of their child is and Shannon replied, if I tell you, you can't tell anyone. He, Watts, wants it to be announced Monday, August 13th of 2018. Shannon added, she is trying to be accommodating. She says, he's talking and kind of being Chris, but he's very distant still. So I guess he was sort of being nicer in a way at that just for then. Next, at 2045 hours, Watts logged into Instagram. At 2107 hours, Watts searched Google for prices on an Audi Q7. Then, at 2112 hours, Shannon told Utah and Cassie, Chris wants to move to Brighton. Shannon announced their son will be named Nico Lee Watts. Shannon cautioned they were not going to tell anyone the name until Monday and tried to keep this a secret. So I'm wondering why Monday? Then Shannon told the women the conversation she had with Watts this evening has been the best talk yet. So then she would have something to look forward to. He seemed to be making a bit of a change the way he was treating her. Then at 22.27 hours, Sarah Nudd asked how the conversation was with Watts. Shannon replied, Oh my God, much better. We talked. He told me he loved me back. Still cold, but not as cold. He even kissed me before going to sleep in basement, which is second kiss since picking him up from airport. So then why did he go to sleep in the basement? But then it goes on, it says, Shannon added, I want to tell you gender, but you have to keep secret. He wants to wait till I'm back to tell everyone. So Monday, Shannon said, he agreed to counseling. Shannon said Watts agreed to read the book I ordered coming tomorrow and write me a letter expressing. Shannon said, we are going away next weekend, just us. So he is now switching his tune and trying to show like he's getting along with her and um, saying that he will go to counseling and read that book. But then at 2300 hours, Watts transferred images of Kessinger, some semi-nude selfies, into his secret calculator application. On August the 10th, Watts took the day off from work and Shannon left for Arizona. That is the Friday. At 620 hours missing from Watts phone but found in Shannon's she told Watts good morning honey so he would have deleted this good morning honey sorry to make you wake up early twice today I didn't want alarm going off we are checked in and everything it's already a madhouse here today enjoy the girls don't forget king supers 10 to 11 I told Bella I was leaving for work with Nikki and assured her that I was always coming home. They usually don't eat right away lately. Give them lots of kisses for me. Thank you for everything last night. I miss and love you so much. 
I'm still in shock. We are having a little boy. I'm so excited and happy. I really thought it was another girl. Thank you for letting me hold you this morning. It felt good. Your letter is on the counter. Have a great time with kiddos. They truly missed you. Love you, baby. Send me pics. So why would, this is strange, why would she thank him for letting her hold him? Now that, that's very sad, but that's what was going on at that time. And then at 6.43, Shannon told Watts, I didn't know why. I feel really weak standing. I'm drinking a Gatorade and had a biscuit getting ready to take off. So she is not feeling well. And that is kind of odd. And there's some suspicion about why that is. But then uh, she says, what time kids wake up? Watts speculated her weakness was from lack of sleep. Watts told her that Bella just woke up and Celeste was still sleeping. At 700 hours, Shannon received a calendar alert regarding her flight, flight WN972 from Den to Phoenix. At 7.51 hours, Jeremy Lindstrom, apparently knowing that Watts were having a baby boy, congratulated Watts. Little man is a lucky boy. Watts thanked Jeremy and asked what time the birthday party was on Sunday. Jeremy said 1 p.m., and that is on August the 12th, that birthday party. Then, at 8.03 hours, not found in Watts' phone, Shannon and Watts exchanged happy anniversary messages. Then at 8.44 hours, Shannon told Watts she just landed in Arizona. At 9.24 hours, Watts asked Jeremy, do you think McKenna is available to watch the girls for a few hours tomorrow night? I won a raffle at work for a Rockies game. It's with people I don't know from work, but I haven't been to a game in a while where the kids aren't involved and only last an inning, lol. Jeremy replied, of course, and asked which house. Watts replied, I would say my house because the girls would fall asleep easier and all it would be would be watching the monitor. When asked what time, Watts said 5.30 p.m. Game starts at 6.15. At 11.57 hours, Shannon sent Watts a web address for a realtor, homesnap.com and Meadows. Three minutes later, Watts visited the website. At 13.34 hours, Watts asked McCoy what time he wanted to meet for that fire stick. By 15.05 hours, Watts told McCoy he had arrived at their meeting location. At 13.42 hours, Shannon received conversation from Amazon that the book she ordered was delivered. Minutes later, she suggested Watts check the mail. For her part, Shannon was upbeat and optimistic this day. For the first time in weeks, this is evidenced in her conversations with others via messages. In the weeks preceding, Shannon was brokenhearted, confused, and emotionally distraught. At present, however, Shannon felt they turned a corner, that Watts was finally communicating with her and was willing to work towards fixing whatever was wrong. Shannon shared this news with many, and her friends sent happy and supportive responses. As for Watts, the book and the Amazon shipping box it arrived in was found in the garage trash can during the search of the home. Next, at 1350 hours, Ronnie Watts asked if Watts deleted his Facebook account. Watts replied, yes, sir, liberated myself. So that is August the 10th. And that's, that's kind of interesting. It seems like Ronnie already knew maybe what he was planning, but uh, it is kind of telling. But let me know what you think about that one there. Next, at 1433 hours, Ronnie asked Watts, if she's gone, you think we could FaceTime with the girls tonight? Or do you think that's a good idea? Don't want to get anything started. Watts replied that he feared Bella would tell Shannon. Ronnie responded, that's what I'm afraid of. If she finds out, she would probably have a fit. 
don't want to make things worse. Watts agreed. So if uh, Chris already knew about his plan, then what is the difference if they do FaceTime with their grandfather? But then again, maybe she would have communicated that to her mother, you know, over the phone or whatever. But anyways, that's another interesting um, message there. Then next, at 1808 hours, Shannon asked Matt Johnson if he still was planning to stop by her home and repair the air conditioning. Johnson said he hopes to and will coordinate with Watts. Shannon and Watts then exchanged messages regarding this expected repair. At 1908 hours, Watts searched the internet for shows at the Comedy Works. Next, at 2007 hours, Watts searched Google for Blue Agave Grill, both in Denver and Northern Colorado. At 2120 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a 10-minute conversation. At 2134 hours, Shannon searched the internet via Groupon for deals on hotels in Aspen. She sent Watts the link, and minutes later, Watts visited the same websites, featuring hotels in Snowmass Village and Aspen. At 2153 hours, Shannon asked Watts, If you're up to it, can you put Bella's back seat in the Lexus? She's been begging for it. Watts said, he will knock it out. At 22.57 hours, Watts transferred a video of Kessinger thanking him for their trip to the Great Sand Dunes in his calculator application. At 23.10 hours, Watts' phone connected with the home's wireless network. On August the 11th, at 7.02 hours, Shannon sent a message to Watts. Good morning, baby. Are the girls up? Watts replied, Good morning. They're watching cartoons in bed. Shannon described the thunderstorms the night before in Arizona. Minutes later, Shannon asked Watts, Do you want the NFL package for the fall? She next searched DirecTV for information about that sports package. Watts replied he wanted to see if the Fire Stick a streaming flash drive can save them from spending the money. At 6.58 hours, Jeremy asked Watts if he would rather go with me to the Broncos. Watts lied and said he would like to, but since it's related to my job, they will ask questions if I don't go. At 9.45 hours, although not found in Watts' phone, Shannon asked him, Have you talked to Bella about... If we have a boy, Watt said, not yet, and added, she said, when the baby comes out, she will pretend it's a girl. Shannon indicated she was laughing and said, oh my God, I love her. At 11.18 hours, Watts searched Google for trails and hot springs near Aspen. At 12.30 hours, Watts told Shannon, Jen McKenna and Kylie coming to watch the girls for a few hours while I go to that Rockies game. Shannon asked him to ensure they don't feed Celeste anything she can't eat. She also asked Watts, will you lock my office? Watts replied, definitely. At 1349 hours, Watts searched Google for Toyota dealerships nearby. At 930 hours, in anticipation for her evening with Watts, Kessinger spent 45 minutes searching Google on topics like how to prepare for anal sex and the anal sex guide. This progressed to searches at Pornhub for interracial porn videos and threesomes. This was by no means the only time she sought out pornographic videos via the internet. At 16.02 hours, Shannon asked what time Watts was leaving for the game. He replied between 1630 and 1700 hours. At 1634 hours, Watts called local Papa John's pizza store. At 1759 hours, Shannon asked McKenna, Hey love, this is Shannon. How are the girls? McKenna replied, They are doing great. Cece ate three slices of pizza. Shannon thanked McKenna for watching the girls 
and asked if she needs anything, just ask. In contrast, Watts never checked in with McKenna to see how the girls were doing or whether McKenna needed anything. At 8.33 hours, Watts searched Google for Lazy Dog on 120th Avenue. At 1900 hours, Watts searched Google for restaurants near 120th Avenue to include Rusty Bucket. At 1920 hours, Shannon asked McKenna if the girls went to bed yet. McKenna replied, they are still awake. They are just watching TV and they said they don't want to go to bed yet. Shannon advised, I'd put them to bed by 8. Chris showed you what to do? Question mark. Make sure they go potty before they go to bed and Celeste gets diaper. McKenna ensured this would all occur. At 2112 hours, Shannon searched Google for the score of the Rockies game as well as what time Rockies game gets over. At 2200 hours, Watts told Jeremy that he would be home in 20 minutes. At 2204 hours, having concluded her evening tryst with Watts, Kessinger searched the internet on topics like Chris Watts, Shannon Watts, Ronnie Watts, and 2825 Saratoga Trail. At 2215 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a three-minute conversation. At 2219 hours, Shannon searched Google and the internet for Lazy Dog Menu, Lazy Dog Restaurant and Bar, find a location. How she came to learn so quickly of Watts' dinner expense is not reflected in the phone, but I suspect an alert from their bank or credit company. At 20 to 28 hours, Watts called Shannon and held a three-minute conversation. Immediately afterwards, she sent Watts a message. Oh, save your receipt so we can write it off. So she already knew that he'd been at that restaurant at that moment. And so she kind of did catch him, but at that time they didn't have any kind of a quarrel. Then, on August the 12th, at 7.32 hours, not found in Watts' phone, Shannon sent him a message. Good morning, baby. Love you. At 7.58 hours, Shannon told Addie, I got a lot of work to do today and this week. Next weekend, I'm going to go MIA a while away with Chris in Aspen. At 8.09 hours, Shannon asked how the girls were. Watts said they were good and drinking a shake. Shannon replied, Miss you guys. Give them kisses for me. Watts said he would and Shannon told him to have a great day. He reciprocated. At 8.11 hours, Josh asked Watts if he was truly all right with Josh and his family staying with the Watts family when they move. Watts said he was. That's cool, man. Watts went to describe the finish of the Rockies game. It was epic. At 8.35 hours, Shannon told Addie, I need to do better with my calendar. I don't block out family time. I fill in family time. He, Watts, said to me last night, it has nothing to do with business though. Addie said she thought this could have been the issue and insisted Shannon make more time for the family. Shannon replied, no, I agree. No, I think it's itsy bitsy things. I sometimes can be bitchy and he gets that side of me. I know I tend to make him feel like he isn't able to do things because I have control issues. He said the other night he wishes I just let him hang up a picture. At 900 hours, Shannon's calendar had an entry titled Talk scheduled for this date and time. Then, at 904 hours, Shannon continued with Addie. I always have, but he also never calls me out. He never fights me, just goes with the flow. He and I know I like things done a certain way, but I never thought about how that made him feel as a man. I don't even know if this is what's bothering him. He still hasn't said. I'm praying. He wrote me a letter, like I asked, since he can express himself better in a letter than talking. Then she sent an emoji of, uh, it's um, a woman, and it's showing a woman shrugging, okay? But there's no photo of that. I am the pusher, and he's the withdrawer. He has strengths that are my weaknesses, and vice versa. 
Shannon continued, the lack of communication isn't on my part. I can be better at how I communicate, but he doesn't communicate. I say things sometimes just to get him to react in any way since he doesn't react and that's not good. It's not even all the time. 99% of the time we are perfectly fine and we have never ever fought literally over anything serious. I have fought with him over stupid stuff like not doing something I asked in a timely manner. Shannon said, I did belittle him without realizing it with his parents, told him he needed to find courage and protect his family. Shannon said Watts is submissive when his parents are involved. Addie said that is Watts' disposition and added he would kill for you. Shannon told Addie, told him in a letter, I would for him and there has to be mutual respect. I did respect his parents enough to deal with them. His mom just didn't, and when alone with me, jabs at me. It's not fair. I mean, I agreed to spend five weeks with both parents. That's hell for me. But I did it for him and kids. Shannon continued. He was never close to anyone but his dad. I, being the family person, tried bringing them closer, and it backfired. I need to feel like he will stand up for us, faced with difficult situations. That's where he flaws, or weakness. Shannon told Addie, My weakness is I have an Italian temper that can't hold back when pissed. I'm a fixer, and I want to talk things out, and he just wants to work it out in his head. I've just been acting kind of normal. Morning, baby, love you, etc., but not overdoing it. Overdoing it is what we do. We are so affectionate, can't stop touching each other, etc. Not just the sex, just the touch. Then, at 9.57 hours, Shannon asked Watts, Can you do me a favor today if you have time? Can you get the girls' backpacks ready for tomorrow? With blankies and spare clothes, please? Question mark. If not, I can do it in the a.m. Watts said he would. At 10.32 hours, Shannon asked Watts to send her some pictures of the girls, quotations, I miss them. Roughly 18 hours before their murders, Watts took one photo of last known image of Celeste in life. He sent this and one of Bella taken at the same time to Shannon. At 10.45 hours, Watts searched Google for Mount Colima. He preserved an image of the volcano spewing lava and smoke. At 11.13 hours, Shannon asked if the girls were taking a nap Watts said they were just laying down. Shannon asked Watts, If you have time before they wake and want to call me back, I'd love to talk to you. Watts said okay, but never did. At 12.17 hours, perhaps the last image of Shannon taken in life, metadata confirmed the date and time. At 13.30 hours, Watts took photographs of the girls playing in the distance in a backyard near a small pool the Lindstrom's birthday party. At 14.46 hours, Ronnie asked if Watts and the girls were doing well. Watts said yes. Ronnie responded, okay, we love you guys. At 15.56 hours, Shannon asked if the girls had fun at the party. Watts said they were still there and they were having fun. Shannon replied, good, I'm glad, okay, love you. Watts did not respond. At 16.56 hours, Watts searched Google for Parakutin, and that is a volcano. I'm not sure if I pronounced that properly. Please let me know in the comments. Next, at 18.44 hours, a photo was created in his image file documenting the temperature setting in the refrigerator. At 18.47 hours, a photo of four chicken breasts on a barbecue grill was created in his image file. At 1706 hours, Watts told Cody Roberts, a co-worker, I have the whip checks for survey 629. I'm gonna go straight out there for my house in the morning. I will look at the 319 as well and run the 1129 if you want. At 1707 hours, Watts called Sandy Rudzek and held a nearly 12-minute conversation. At 17.20 hours, Roberts replied, 
I was going to head out the first thing tomorrow to check out the 319. Did Troy talk to you about what I had found there Friday afternoon? At 1723 hours, Watts answered, Yep, I was standing right next to him, lol. I was giving him a fire stick to look at. I can go out there, though. No sense in both of us going out there, lol. At 1726 hours, Watts searched Google for the Dead Sea Scrolls. Then at 1809 hours, Roberts responded, All right, sounds good, man. I appreciate it. I think I still have a couple of Connies left out there. And that's spelled K-O-N-Y-S. I can let you know in the morning. And let me know if you find anything at the 319. And that is the survey location. If not, we may pressure test the BP line and see if it's leaking underground. Then at 1946 hours, Shannon asked, Hey honey, kids in bed? And asked for pictures. Watts replied, Bella just back in bed. Shannon noted, they must be exhausted. Watts resent the images from earlier in the day at the dinner table. He added this image, taken later at the birthday party, last known photograph of Bella. Next, at 1954 hours, Shannon told Watts the power went out during dinner with Cindy and Addie before the airport. She sent a photograph of the darkened restaurant. She commented on the photograph he just sent. Great job on Bella's hair. Watts replied, that sucks. Yeah, she's cooperated. Shannon replied, really bad dust storm, rain, thunder, and lightning. Shannon said, Cindy bought her dinner. Shannon concluded, praying, it doesn't cancel flight. Addie's flight was canceled this morning. Okay, well, that's interesting because it's too bad that it wasn't cancelled, but now next, at 2020 hours, Shannon called Watts and held a nine-minute conversation, revealing how their talk went. Immediately after this call, she told Watts, Sorry I bothered you. I just wanted to talk to you. So that must not have went too well. Then at 2031 hours, Shannon told Addie she can call Chris about Jack. He's up. At 20.33 hours, Shannon told Watts, Thank you for taking good care of the kids this weekend so I can learn and work. I appreciate it. Then, at 20.45 hours, Watts returned a missed call to Addie and held a 16-minute conversation. Moments later, he told Shannon, You're welcome. I just talked to Addie. In their follow-up messages, it is clear Watts offered Addie mechanical advice on a car. Then at 2109 hours, Shannon asked Watts, What kind of vegetables do you want with dinner tomorrow? Watts replied, Green beans. Shannon said she would buy them tomorrow at Costco along with other items. Shannon soon told Watts that she was ready to come home. I'm ready for bed. At 2113 hours, Shannon sent a message to Addie explaining the accompanying text was what Shannon planned to tell Watts tomorrow night. The message read, Can you please tell me something? Because just like you, I'm in my head. I try to fix things and make them better. And this is making me crazy. I know that you need time. I want to give you what you're asking for and respect your space. I need some time. This place that I'm in, in my head, is not a good place. It is not healthy for me or Nico. I need you to help me help you. I need you to give just a little bit of what I did or didn't do so I'm not going crazy in my head to figure it out. I know I can't fix this by myself. That we are going to have to work together. So that is what she planned on telling Chris the following night. That was her plan. Then at 21.29 hours, Shannon made an unanswered call to Watts. At 21.44 hours, Shannon told Watts, tried calling you to give you update, was starting to board and they announced that our crew isn't here yet 
and it's going to be a minimum of an hour before they are here. At 2145 hours, Shannon received a calendar alert. Flight W16149 from Phoenix to Denver. At 2321 hours, Watts finally replied, Holy crap! Sorry, I passed out on the couch. That's gonna be late. Next, on August 13th, at 0051 hours, Shannon's phone connected with Wi-Fi provided by Southwest Airlines. At 0125 hours, Shannon told Cassie they had landed. This is the last outgoing communication found on Shannon's phone. At 0148 hours, Watt's phone logged the Vivint alert of entry into their home. At that same moment, the Vivint video monitor captured Shannon as she walked up to the home and entered. Utah was captured backing out of the driveway. Between 0148 hours and 0423 hours, there was no movement detected on the main floor of the home on the Vivint. At 0201 hours, in a group text message, Utah told Cassie, we are home. Shannon's phone activity is otherwise dormant until 7.40 hours when Watts sent the device a staged message pretending not to know where she was. At 2.18 hours, the home's router logged an unspecified activity in Watts' phone. So I'm wondering what that would be. Then, at 5.48 hours, Watts left the home with the bodies of his family piled in the back seat of his truck. At 6.29 to 6.30 hours, Watts made three unanswered calls to Roberts. At 6.31 hours, Watts sent a message asking Roberts, where are you at? At 6.32 hours, Roberts replied, just got fuel in Kersey. At 6.32 hours, Watts made an unanswered call to Roberts. At 6.33 hours, Watts responded with two messages to Roberts. Okay, I'm here. Okay, I'm in survey. Where are you going first? At 6.33 hours, Roberts answered, DPC state, and Watts replied with thumbs up emoji. At 6.35 hours, Roberts advised, I need to call Chad and see if he plans on still stroking the 1029 out there to see if it'll pump up. If so, I'll have to meet him, or he will have to get the cannon plugs from Tony, okay? At 6.35 hours, Watts responded, okay, let me know before I leave here. At 6.38 hours, Roberts asked, I think he, Chad, might be heading out there today. Phone was breaking up pretty bad. At 6.39 hours, likely fearing another employee may show up at the 319. While he was disposing of the bodies, Watts made an unanswered call to Chad McNeil. At 6.41 hours, Watts followed that call with a message asking McNeil, You headed out to Survey? I'm out here. Cody said something about pumping the 1029. Then at 6.43, McNeil replied, Well, since you're out there, you want to fire it up? Have Cody bring his cables. At 6.44, Watts agreed. Okay, I will. McNeil advised, I'll head that way in a bit. At 6.59 hours, Roberts told Watts, I guess I'm headed that way to start up the 1029 and Chad will be meeting out there. Watts replied, okay. At 7.18 hours, Watts took a photograph of his laptop screen, presumably sitting in his truck. The metadata confirms Watts was at the survey coordinates. The image is apparently only in a thumbnail format, and enlarging it blurs out the writing on the laptop screen. At 7.40 hours, Watts sent the staged message to Shannon's phone. If you take the kids somewhere, please let me know where they're at. At 7.40 hours, Watts made a two and a half minute call to Troy McCoy. At 7.41 hours, Roberts told Watts, I'm here at the 1029 now. 
you mind coming out here just in case something gets sideways? At 7.43 hours, Watts told Roberts, Yeah, I'm at the 319, one sec. Watts then took this picture. This is the photo of the ground showing a leak. You can see two pipes coming up from the ground there. And I'm guessing that that is a leak coming out there in the soil. At 7.43 hours, Watts called Luke Apple, a co-worker, and held a 1 minute and 45 second conversation. At 7.43 hours, Roberts asked Watts, 10-4, how's it look? Fresh, lol. At 7.47 hours, McNeil called Watts and held a 2 minute conversation. At 7.51 hours, Roberts asked, is it a lot? Watts responded by sending the image he took minutes earlier. At 7.55 hours, Roberts asked, Want me to bring some gator? We can try and pressure test the line too, if you want. Watts replied, I got it handled. Thanks though. At 8.25 hours, Watts made a staged 23 second call to Shannon's phone. At 8.26 hours, Watts searched the internet for the Primrose School on Erie at Vista Ridge. Seconds later, he called the school and held a one-minute conversation. During this call, Watts told staff that his daughters would not be attending school there any longer. At 0905 hours, Shannon's phone had an appointment reminder scheduled for this time, her medical appointment. Seconds later, Watts called Ann Meadows, the realtor, and held a three-minute and 40-second conversation. At 10.06 hours, Centura Health Physician Group Women's Health in Erie called Shannon's phone and left a message. I confirmed the calling number is listed to this clinic. At 10.10 hours, during a respite, following the murder of his family and disposing of their bodies at a desolate well site, Watts searched Google for the lyrics to Battery by Metallica. So these lyrics are very telling. I'm going to read them out. And this is how it goes. Lashing out the action, returning the reaction. Weak are ripped and torn away. Hypnotizing power, crushing all that cower, battery is here to stay. Smashing through the boundaries, lunacy has found me, cannot stop the battery. Pounding out aggression, turns into obsession, cannot kill the battery, cannot kill the family, battery is found in me. Crushing all deceivers, mashing non-believers, never-ending potency, Hungry, violent seekers, feeding off the weaker, breeding on insanity. Smashing through the boundaries, lunacy has found me, cannot stop the battery. Pounding out aggression, turns into obsession, cannot kill the battery, cannot kill the family. Battery is found in me, battery, battery. Circle of destruction, hammer comes crushing, powerhouse of energy. Whipping up a fury, dominating flurry. We create the battery. So the powerhouse of energy. I wonder if that is the battery, the fuel that is coming up. But uh, anyway, so it goes on a bit more. It says, smashing through the boundaries. Lunacy has found me. Cannot stop the battery. Pounding out aggression. Turns into obsession. Cannot kill the battery. Cannot kill the family. Battery is found in me. Battery. So that is that um, crazy song that he went to listen to that he looked up at 10, 10 in the morning. He did that. And Watts has proven a keen interest in song lyrics. He is no doubt familiar with this song's lyrics. He attended the Metallica concert in Denver on June 7th of 2017. Then at 10, 28 hours, Sandy Rutzek, who is Shannon's mother, asked Watts, Is Shannon okay? Watts made an unanswered call to Rutzek. She called him back and held a one minute conversation. At 10.33 hours to 10.41 hours, Watts searched the internet for hotels in Aspen. At 10.42 hours, Watts called the Weston Snowmass Resort and held a nearly two minute conversation. Now, that is the place that I think they had booked with Shannon that they were going to go together. Then at 1044 hours, Sandy called Watts briefly, Sandy being um, Shannon's mother. At 1045 hours, Watts searched the internet for Groupon to include the company's contact information. 
At 10.51 hours, Watts called Sandy and held a one-minute, 12-second conversation. At 12.16 hours, Josh Rosenberg asked Watts, Hey, bro, Cassie asked if I've seen. I guess her and Nikki can't get a hold of her. Have you heard from her today? At 12.16 hours, Watts took two photographs of sunflowers in an open prairie. And the metadata shows that this is Rogan, possibly at the 1029. And then at 12.17 hours, Watts' phone received an alert from his Vivint panel. At 12.18 hours, in response, Watts called Nicole Utoff and held a one-minute conversation. At 12.21 hours, Watts told Josh, I just talked to Nikki. Shannon went to a friend's house with the kids today. I haven't heard from her since. I will keep you updated, though. Josh replied, the girls were worried. Watts responded, I know. I just saw Nikki on the doorbell camera. At 12.27 hours, Watts called Utah and held a two-minute and a half conversation. At 12.27 hours, Ann Meadows, the realtor, told Watts, Hi, I'm working on your market analysis. I would like to bring my listing coordinator with me when I bring it. Did you finish the basement? Any other upgrades? The messages were also found in Shannon's phone, likely sent as a group text by Anne. At 12.31 hours, Addie asked Watts if Shannon was okay. Everyone is worried. It's not like her not to respond, and we haven't heard back from her all day. At 12.41 hours, Watts called Utah and held a 40-second conversation. At 12.43 hours, Cassie told Watts, Shannon is in a very bad way emotionally, and I'm worried about her. I know you are having issues, but I don't know to what extent. But I do know I have never seen her so broken to an extent I'm worried. Watts replied, she went to a friend's house with the kids. She won't tell me where, though. When I get home, I will update you. Minutes later, Cassie told Watts, Sweetie, nobody knows about you and her other than Nikki and I. So, where would she go if not with Nikki and not to Arizona where I'm at? Her car and shoes and everything is at the house. What the heck is going on with you guys? What the heck is going on with you guys that she would totally shut out everything? It's not like her. Watts responded, I told Nikki about it so she wouldn't freak out anymore at the house. I think Christina knows as well. We talked last night and I told her I wanted to sell the house, get something smaller. Separation will be the best right now if we can talk through the issues. I really don't want you to think I'm a bad person, Cassie. Cassie replied, right now, I don't care about you or your relationship or what type of person you are or not or what I think of you. I'm not trying to be rude when I say that. In the midst of all that was occurring, Watts tended to his real estate concerns. Telling Ann Meadows, basement is still unfinished. No other upgrades. At 13.03 hours, Cassie chastised Watts, explaining her only concern was for his damn wife and her well-being. Cassie advised, Nikki is calling the police. Cassie told Watts, she is broken emotionally. Her blood sugar dropped due to not eating and it could cause her to pass out. So unless you want the police to bust your damn door down, you get home and check on your family. Meadows replied to Watts during this exchange, suggesting a house at 6508 Saratoga may be viable. At 1305 hours, Watts told Cassie, I'm going home, Cassie, on my way. Don't call the police. I will be there in 45 minutes. Cassie thanked him and explained her fears. Nikki, I know what state she was in all weekend. And we want to see she isn't in the house because this is seriously a concern. 1307 hours, Watts called Cassie and held a one-minute conversation. At 1313 hours, McCoy asked Watts if everything was okay. If you need anything, let me know. At 1304 hours, Meadow asked if Watts preferred a three-car garage. Watts replied, three-car garage. I will drive by the 6508 address when I get home. At 1331 hours and 1359 hours, Utah called Watts twice briefly. 
At 1410 hours, Christina Meacham called Watts. What is going on? Question mark. Where are you? We are so worried. What the F? At 1411 hours, Watts sent another staged message to Shannon's phone. Where are you? At 1414 hours, messages from Utah were finally received by Shannon's phone. By all accounts, these would have been sent by Utov earlier in the morning before she called police. They included, Just wanted to see if you're okay. I know you were hurting a lot last night. Hope you're okay. Let me know how your appointment goes. I've been to your house. You won't open your door. Your alarm is set. Your shoes are sitting inside. Your car's home. I'm so very concerned about you right now. I need you to text me or call me and just tell me, okay, if you don't want to talk to nobody, you don't want to be around anybody, I get it, it's fine, but I need to know you're okay. A group text was created between Cassie, Christina, Utoff, Addie, and Shannon's phone. The group sent assorted messages of growing concern for Shannon. At 1426 hours, Watts told Christina, the police are here, Call you when I know. At 1546 hours, Addie asked Watts what's happening. I'm so worried. Watts called Addie and held a six-minute conversation. At 1548 hours, Addie told the group, the police need to look at Chris's cell and computer. Shannon's phone soon exploded with anxious messages of concern from friends and family across the nation. As the afternoon moved into evening, the messages became gut-wrenching pleas to hear from Shannon, sending her prayers, hope, and their love. At 16.22 hours, when Kelly Burke asked what the police were saying, Watt said, they will file missing persons report in the AM if we don't hear from her. At 16.26 hours, Burke asked Watts if Shannon was awake when he left for work. Watts lied and said, I talked to her early this morning between 4 and 5 a.m., I think she went back to sleep afterwards. She was still there when I left. Kids still sleeping. Burke said she was scared and Watts said he was too. At 17.01 hours, Kessinger made two unanswered calls to Watts, which were deleted. At 17.05 hours, Watts called Chase Bank and held a nearly two-minute conversation. He called a separate number for Chase, moments later and held a two and a half minute conversation. At 17.30 hours, Watts made an unanswered call to Kessinger that was deleted. At 17.48 hours, unaware of events, Meadows asked if Watts drove by the 6508 Saratoga address. Completely aware of events, Watts still replied, just did, yep, that's the exact model. At 1800 hours, following suggestions by many, Watts searched Google for hospitals near his home. In less than four minutes, Watts called Good Samaritan Medical Center, Lafayette, St. Anthony North Health Campus, Longmont United Hospital, and UC Health Broomfield. The average duration of these calls was 40 seconds. The longest was 69 seconds. Out of curiosity, I called St. Anthony's without identifying myself. I asked if a Rolo Tomasi was a patient. It took two minutes to get my answer. I suspect Watts merely called each hospital to create a trail of concocted concern and never actually spoke to anyone. At 18.23 hours, Burke asked if Watts had any luck with the hospitals and Watts said no luck at all. At 18.30 hours, Meadows asked Watts if Shannon was okay, noting she has not taken part in their group text exchange about selling the house. Watts replied, she hasn't been around all day. It's very odd. At 18.52 hours, Watts told Samantha Paisley, a.k.a. Sam, I am praying so hard. I am sick to my stomach. Cops searched the house up and down and drilled me pretty hard. I have no idea where they could be. Sam asked why the police were drilling him. An hour later, Watts explained, They are just being thorough. They got to do all the digging they can. 
I saw them this morning. Yeah, people are helping me search. You don't need to get on a plane. We have a lot of support here. At 1900 hours, Watts received a calendar notice titled Dinner with Shannon. Shannon had a similar entry, Dinner with Chris, but scheduled for an hour later. The hour difference indicates the entry while in Arizona using that state's time zone. At 2112 hours, a line at the Frederick Police Department called Watts and held a six-minute conversation. At 2309 hours, Kessinger called Watts and held a 51-minute conversation, which was deleted. On August the 14th, at 0002 hours, Kessinger searched Google for Shannon Watts. At 0158 hours, Watts played phone tag with a line at the Frederick Police Department. At 0207 hours, Watts made an unanswered call to Kessinger. She called him back seconds later, and they held a 10-minute conversation. So this is on the 14th, and that is the Tuesday when they had that 10-minute conversation. Then, at 4.58 hours, that same day, Sandy called Watts and held a 4-minute conversation. At 6.32 hours, Sandy called again and held a 6-minute conversation. Then, at 7.26 hours, Watts perpetuated his fallacy, telling Sam, I am hoping she's with someone I don't know about because I've exhausted all the people I know of. I'm optimistic we will reunite again. People have been stopping by from time to time. At 9.29 hours, Watts transferred one last image into his secret calculator application, a semi-nude selfie of Kessinger. Okay, so he's still transferring on the Tuesday. He's still putting nudes into that secret app. And uh, Shannon is gone, so he's still doing that. Then, at 12.08 hours, Kessinger spent nearly four hours searching Google and the Internet for Watts, news outlets, and news accounts of Shannon's disappearance, and they were all deleted. Then at 12.31 hours, Watts began to tell others that he was doing interviews with the news media. At 13.36 hours, Watts told Sam an Amber Alert is not applicable to the facts as they are known presently. Watts added, they just swept the house with dogs to pick up a scent. Watts said he has completed all his interviews with the news outlets. At 1421 hours, Watts added Fox 31 reporter to his contacts. At 1430 hours, Watts called Sandy and held a 10-minute conversation. At 1504 hours, Watts told Addy, Good morning, America has contacted my sister. At 1700 hours, Kessinger searched Google on topics like, Can cops trace text messages? How long do phone companies keep text messages? Difference between text message contact and text message detail. And those were all deleted. At 1800 hours, Watts had a calendar entry titled, Talk, scheduled to begin at this time. At 1821 hours, Kessinger searched the internet for news accounts of this incident and Shannon's name, which were all deleted. These searches were conducted frequently by Kessinger throughout the next several days. She deleted every one afterwards. At 1826 hours, Watts told Nick Thayer that he was leaving now. Stopping for gas, I'll be there, Watts had earlier agreed to spend the night at the Thayer's. At 1842 hours, Watts returned a missed call from the Frederick Police Department. As a result of that call, Watts turned around and drove to the police department where he held an interview with FBI spanning 1900 hours to 2306 hours. At 1859 hours, after a brief call to the Thayers, Nick advised they would drive to the police department and wait for Watts to finish. At 2010 hours, Watts told Dave Colin that he was talking with the FBI presently. At 2042 hours, Nick told Watts, Hey man, we are sitting outside thinking of you. I am talking to an investigator friend and she recommends maybe not talking without a lawyer. I know this text might get there too late. At 2304 hours, 
Watts added FBI agent Graham Coder to his phone's contacts. Watts told an assortment of friends that he met with the FBI. They have the case now. On August 15th of 2018, at 0747 hours, Watts told his father, Text me when you land. I can pick you up. At 0903 hours, Coder sent a message to Watts. Hey, Chris, it's Graham from last night. Just checking in. Will you call me back? Watts made that call three minutes later. At 0937 hours, Watts told Coder that his father just landed and he was en route picking him up. At 1013 hours, Watts told Coder that he just picked up his dad. At 1027 hours, Coder told Watts, Swing on by the PD when you get a chance. We'll make a game plan for today. Watts answered a short call from Coder a minute later. Frequently this day, news outlets sent Watts messages requesting more interviews. At 10.53 hours, Watts resumed his interview with FBI and CBI. He eventually confessed murdering Shanann and disposing of all three bodies. He was subsequently taken into custody. On August 16th, of 2018 at 12.39 hours, Michael Vesperman sent a message to Watts. I don't think you will see this, but I hope you find peace in your struggles and I pray that you will find God and have mercy on your soul. As news broke of his confession and arrest, Shannon's phone received desperate messages from her friends and loved ones like Addie. Need you hear, I want you to know you are literally my right hand. I can't do this without you. Then on August 19th, Kessinger searched the internet on topics related to Amber Fry, the mistress of Scott Peterson. Her searches included Fry's book deal, her net worth, and did people hate Amber Fry? All right, guys, so that is a lot of detail to go through. And, um, it shows exactly what really did happen the communication and so i'm going to go over this more closely in detail instead of going over the whole thing i'm going to focus in on specific parts and um, let me know which parts interest you most Um, there's a lot here to look at a lot of these things we've heard bits and pieces of this over the last couple years but um it's really telling when you read this in order, you know, of, of exactly when it happened, each little bit, when Kessinger was searching things, when Shannon and Chris were actually planning for that Aspen trip, what he was telling her. And so, you know, it's really telling because you can see and we know that he was planning one thing, but he was stringing her along and lying to make her feel comfortable. And that is one of the horrible parts about this, is that she was being tricked. And she'd asked him for the truth, but he just wouldn't give it to her. He just wouldn't tell her. And she kept she kept asking and, and telling him that she needed to know the truth, but he would he just wouldn't tell. And so you can see that here in these messages. But um, that's it for now. Let me know what you think about all this. And um, thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.